why magenta does not exist in nature. This color is placed between blue and red via the backyard, and does not have its own wavelength like green does, and does not appear in the visible color spectrum. Green is also between blue and red, has a wavelength and does exist in nature. Magenta took its name from an aniline dye made and patented in 1859 by the French chemist Francois Emmanuel Bergwin, who originally called it Fuxine. It was renamed to celebrate the Italian-French victory at the Battle of Magenta fought between the French and Austrians on June 4, 1859, near the Italian town of Magenta in Lombardy. Magenta cannot be located on the spectrum because it does not exist on the visible spectrum. Magenta does appear in nature of course, in flowers and between the two parts of a double rainbow. When trying to determine color, the brain simply averages the colors to come up with an outcome. If you mix green and red light, you'll end up with a yellow light because the brain has averaged it. When you mix red and purple light, your brain averages them. Ultimately, this would reasonably come out to green, that's the average wavelength. But because your brain wants the outcome to make logical sense, it mixes the colors and you get magenta. Magenta doesn't exist because it has no wavelength, there's no place for it on the spectrum. The only reason we see it is because our brain doesn't like having green between purple and red. So it substitutes a new thing that makes enough sense, right? Well, then, here's a new idea. Magenta might not exist, but there are also ways to create imaginary colors. Colors that can't exist, but which you can see temporarily by looking at a chimerical color demo template. This happens when you stare at one image for a bit until some of the cells perceiving the color become tired. After this, you can switch to looking at another, very different color, which will let you see the imaginary colors. These colors, although considered imaginary, are still interesting concepts, especially where the wavelengths are considered. Because these colors don't exist, they don't actually have wavelengths. If you try to determine one for hyperbolic orange, for example, you'll wind up with regular orange, a balance of red and green with significantly more red. Overall, the idea of color and the implications of it are indeed fascinating. It makes you wonder what the actual appearance of items in the universe is. If color is merely our interpretation of wavelength values, what is the actual look of our workspaces, of the food we eat? What we see may just be a lofty thought, nothing more than an idea.